Welcome to Paradise Island in the Bahamas, where we have a great top 10 matchup here for you today in the Battle for Atlantis Women's Basketball Tournament. We've got the top ranked team in South Carolina, undefeated, of course, against the undefeated Oregon Ducks, ranked number nine in the country as well. Of course, Oregon will be playing without Niara Sabali uh, today, but still is going to be a great matchup. We're going to start uh, with South Carolina and Aaliyah Boston, and I'm joined by my color analyst, Helen Williams. What do you like about her? Oh, well, they finally got her going last night. Obviously, inside, they need her presence to see here. Great post moves, great footwork, can go either side with her hands, and uh, they finally got her going last night. They're going to need her again today. And then, of course, a Sedona Prince. She didn't have the typical game that she usually does, but what, what does she need to do today? Well, she did have a double-double last night. She had 11 points and 11 rebounds, but they're going to need her to score more today. She's got a silky smooth game and so she's gonna have to use it today and for more on the reason of why she needs to score more we're gonna go to Danny Wexelman Jill you're right we found out that news right before the game and if you remember she sat out her first two seasons with Oregon after two knee surgeries she had torn her ACL twice she comes back last season all pack 12 leading her team with 297 points but two weeks ago she had an apparent knee injury in the win versus Idaho. She came out of that game and she's out of the game today. So they will look to their bench for more opportunities on offense, especially between Sedona Prince and Kylie Watson. Jill. Danny, thank you so much for that report. We have tipped off here in this top 10 matchup. And Destiny Henderson makes the three. We've got a three, two game here so far. And and how do you see that, Helen, in terms of what Sedona Prince needs to uh, to do here uh, with missing the presence of Niara Sabali? Well, she's going to have to be more assertive and more aggressive than she was yesterday. Sabali carried them, I think, yesterday when they needed them, but she's really got to be aggressive, go to the basket, take advantage of opportunities when she has mismatches. And then on that, the second three of the game for South Carolina, Zaya Cook, one of the starters, Henderson, Boston, Victoria Saxton and Bree Beal round out the starters for South Carolina. For Oregon, you've got Hurst Watson, Maddie Shearer, Sedona Prince, and Sydney Parrish. Speaking of Parrish, she tries a long shot from the wing. Just eight bodies suited up today as Destiny Henderson's shot is blocked, but the follow by oh, Aaliyah yeah. Boston is late. First foul of the game on the floor. South Carolina, <laughs> South Carolina fans already don't like the officiating. <laughs> we're only at eight minutes and 12 seconds left. Only a couple minutes off the clock and they were already booing. <laughs> that was Bree Beal with the uh, first foul of the game. And as we've mentioned, Oregon shorthanded today. Just eight players suited up. So a very short bench over there, as you can see with Oregon as Sedona Prince almost loses the ball. It's tied up here. Good hustle. And it's going to be South Carolina ball. Leah Boston will take the ball out here. She had 19 of her 23, as we mentioned, uh, in the first half of South Carolina's 88-60 win over Buffalo to get here to the semis. And Oregon just edge Oklahoma 98-93. Oregon in the 2-3 defense. Nice little high-low, that's something that they want to focus on. Henderson's three is missed. Oregon with the rebound, uh, Hurst with the long pass, but Maddie Shear is able to bring that down and get things set for the Ducks. Almost loses the ball, she covers it up, jump ball. You can see the defensive Oregon. intensity here for South Carolina, something they want to focus on is being more disciplined, keeping their player in front of them, and not allowing easy opportunities. And the layup for Paris. South Carolina leading eight to six. Yesterday with the Ducks victory, Kelly Graves, who's in his eighth season, reached the 600 coaching victories mark, and, and that's certainly a big deal. You got those wins, you add them all up from four stops at Big Bend Community College, St. Mary's, Gonzaga, and of course here at Oregon where he's had so much success. 
and you would ask him what it means, and he would just say, but I've been in the business for a long time. That's <laughs> about it. 58 um, years old he is. And he's done a great job building this Oregon program into a national power. Has had 40 wins against top 25 teams, so he's never afraid to play the best to figure out what his team is like. And talking about playing the best, they played uh, UConn a couple of years ago, and then the Connecticut Huskies, who have already advanced to the championship game here in this tournament, will be playing in Eugene in January. So falls right in line with him wanting to play marquee matchups. Boston with the nice bucket inside. Oh, yeah. Nice little half hook Perfect there. Trying to get the ball into Kylie Watson. Kylie Watson, of course, in the starting lineup, having to play a bigger role. She had eight points, three rebounds, two assists, and a steal. A great overall game against Oklahoma yesterday. What do you see her role today? Well, I, I saw her yesterday give them some really good opportunities offensively, and with, along with her and Pinto. They're, they're going to need but the contribution from both of them today. Um, but her contributions came in a crucial time when Sabali wasn't in the game, and they weren't really going to Sedona Prince. She was able to provide them with some offense. And they will need an even bigger role from her here today as well. Three Beal with a three-pointer. South Carolina up 15 to six, and timeout. Kelly Graves and Oregon the South Carolina fans are excited. All offensively. Well, you see here the three-pointer. They're shooting 50, 46 percent from three-point range, and that allows them to give some opportunity for their post player Leah Boston. So they've got to keep on doing that. You see Bill here with the three-pointer. We'll be back. Welcome back for the Battle for Atlantis tournament. We're in the second game today. A great top 10 matchup for women's basketball, undefeated. Oregon ranked ninth in the country versus undefeated South Carolina, the top ranked team in the country. And South Carolina firing on all cylinders already, three of four from three point range. And that's going to be important for them throughout the season. They're averaging 46% from three point range. And in order to open up that inside, they're going to need to be consistent with that. Kylie Watson dribbled it up against the press. Maddie Shear trying to find an opening. Prince found one from the elbow. And those are her first points of the game. Oh, great pass, great look there by Cook. That back line fell asleep there with Watson in that 2-3 and allowed that layup. Victoria Saxon with the layups, but as you mentioned, Zaya Cook made that happen with that beautiful pass. And that's great defense. Did you see Leticia and me here in? I gotta say, this kid's my favorite player. They talk about all the other players on South Carolina, but I really think she is key to how well they'll do this year, and partly because she can guard five positions. You'll see her guarding the point guard. You'll see her guarding anybody that's handling the basketball. Uh, and her offense obviously is not as far as, uh, as uh, behind her defense, but she's really key to South Carolina's victory. Impressive for her at six foot four that she's able to be so versatile. A little miscommunication there between Boston and Ami here. Ami here, the junior from Mississauga, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> Apologies if I am not. She's got a cool nickname, too. They call her L.A. Kylie Watson at the top. Found Pinto. Pinto tried to go off the glass. Didn't work. Henderson pushing the ball up the floor. Zaya Cook for the almost layup, but she is fouled. That kid used to play Pop Warner football, and you can just tell she is a tremendous athlete, great body control, 
and add add her skill set to that. Just a tremendous, tremendous basketball player. People love Zaya Cook. She's got NIL deals. She's working on some music. Zaya Cook very well rounded. Zaya Cook at the free throw line. Makes her first free throw. South Carolina up 18 to eight. Make it 19 to eight with those two free throws. Zaya Cook now with six points, it's rather seven points. And Kylie Watson trying to go coast to coast, didn't happen, Pino with the rebound and the putback. Yeah, miscommunication because for me here was trying to get the trap and no one picked up her person, Watson on the way back. Cordoso tries to get one inside, not able to. And of course, Cardoso, such an amazing talent for South Carolina. Six foot seven. Oh, and Amihir loses it. Sheer steals it, tries to make the layup. And there she is again for the putback. Pinto, no blocking out by South Carolina. And Oregon wanting a block there, but she didn't give Amihir room to come down. Again, just smart kid. Ball comes, cut to the basket, reading the defense, and great pass by Cardoso. Foul by Pinto. Oregon Puts foul me here at the line. Shania Pinto over at first. 17 foul. And me here, or LA, had five points and two rebounds in yesterday's game against Buffalo. And she won't be shooting free throws. Hill at the top, dribbling around, doesn't find any room around Watson. Zaya Cook resetting the offense. Cardoso up, sets the screen. Cook tries to get around the trees, and that is blocked by Pinto. Yeah, Tay gave her a little bit of look after she blocked that shot. <laughs> like, don't come in here, kid. You're just a little mouse. <laughs> this is my territory. <laughs> Ami here gets fouled. But I will give Cook credit for challenging, challenging the, the big kid. All right, sometimes you can get a rainbow shot over those extended arms. And you see a me here evolved in a lot of plays. They won't necessarily be things that you could measure on the stat sheet, but very, very important person for That's South Carolina to have on the floor. That bench is so deep. So many players contribute for South Carolina in minutes in defense, and they have, uh, as you've talked about, about three starting lineups <laughs> on that team. 21 to 12 lead here with 3.25 left in the first quarter, and now Sanaya Rivers is into the game. South Carolina pressing. Watson gets the ball over the timeline. Over to Pinto. Pinto to Shear. Shear sets up the offense. And finding a room down the lane is Sydney Parrish, but she is unable to convert from the lane. Henderson over to Ami here. Ami here is shot block. Or perhaps a foul, and I believe. There is a foul here. Now, one of the things that South Carolina is going to have to work on is doing a better job of coming off, uh, as you see the pass here, and a knee here going to the basket. Defending the curl cuts, they really have struggled with that. And you saw the last possession down with the freshman, Sanaya Rivers trailing just a little bit too much on that. But they'll she'll pick that up as the year goes along. I'm sure coach will tell her about it. <laughs> 
they do not forget. Sydney Parrish picks up her second foul, so she goes to the bench. And that's one thing that Oregon cannot do is get into foul trouble today as she sits over on the bench. And we see Sedona Prince there getting a quick rest as well as, as we've mentioned with Sabali out. Sabali, excuse me. It's a, a very short bench, just uh, three players on that bench today. And Princess, you know, she was key for them yesterday, had her most of her 18 points in the second half. Basically that third quarter where she hit three threes that helped spark Oregon to their win. So I don't expect her or Sedona Prince to be sitting very long. You mentioned that third quarter, 38 points ties a career high for the Oregon Ducks team for points in the third quarter. They were down but not out and they came back to beat Oklahoma. Blocking foul. Yeah, again, the freshman trailing on the curl and that everybody else has to pick up and, and help her and that creates that issue there. Hall with the foul. And the turnover and leading the way, Zaya Cook. She brings it back out, wants to make sure they get a good look here. Cardoso, always a good look when you get it to her there, right? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the bigs against the bigs, you know, here for both these teams and whether or not they cancel each other out and see if the guards are the ones who decide this basketball game. As you see, sure, there with a nice pull up. Again, South Carolina just getting caught on those screens. You've got to get off and get around, jump to the basketball and be ahead of it on defense because you're creating issues for your teammates to have to come and help. A me here. Shot from the elbow is no good, but they get the offensive rebound. There's a me here in the lane. She travels. Turnover South Carolina. South Carolina still with an 11 point lead with just under two minutes remaining here in the first quarter between this top 10 matchup. Great game and a great tournament. We've got four top 25 teams here today in this tournament. Two top 10 teams here today. Just a wonderful tournament and just so many wonderful matchups. And matchups, key competitive matchups early in the season, which uh, is great for the fans. Great for the fans, great for the game, and great for us, Helen. I'm not complaining about being in the Bahamas at all and being able to do these games. It's oh. a lot of fun. Saw Kelly Graves on my morning walk along the path right on the beach. He was taking in a few moments. I know there's not a lot of time for coaches, but Boston's shot off the back of the rim. Sonia Rivers gets the rebound, pulls it back, 15 on the shot clock. Rivers finds Boston open, and she doesn't get the shot to fall. But there was something over the, the rim there on that one. Watson and Shear both played nine minutes for the Ducks. Three second violation. Turnover, Oregon. Three second violation, 42 seconds left here in the first quarter. Oregon's gotta be tired already. We got, like we said. We see them leaning down. Uh, this, this is a good look. It's only 42 seconds, though, to see what 6-7 and 6-8 look like. Exactly. Um, for, again, 6-5 and 6-7 for South Carolina. The long, outstretched arms of Pinto guarding Boston. Oh, and Prince gets a hand on that ball and able to recover that is Anaya Russell. And here comes the screen on the ball with the shot clock under 10. Cook. And it falls, bounces up, and in. South Carolina up 27-14. Nine seconds left for the Ducks to get a shot off. And yeah, Cook is so explosive off the dribble. Double dribble for Sedona. Prince, 0.8 seconds left. Oregon with the turnover, and you can see the frustration mounting. It's going to be something to pay attention to, that Sedona-Prince-Aliyah-Boston matchup. They've been... Uh, 
The camera's not on them, but they've been going at each other. Always love a good battle. Some big names in the game here. Sedona Prince, as we talked about, didn't have her usual game yesterday, but she was finding Sabali, who was having the big game. And you know, when you have the hot hand, you got to feed that player. And as we end the first quarter here, they don't have her services here today since she's injured. But South Carolina, the number one ranked team in the country with the 13 point lead. Jill Painter Lopez, Helen Williams, and Danny Wexelman back here with you at Imperial Arena in the Bahamas. And what a balanced scoring attack. All 10 players for South Carolina have been have scored in this game, Helen. And it's something that they're going to need later on in the season. So, you know, you'll see some players today probably get some some extra time in real time situations, real time game time situations, because they're going to need them the rest of the year, especially when you get to the SEC, Coach Daly wants experienced players ready to go for the conference season. South Carolina. Of course, South Carolina, a Final Four team last year. They won the national championship in 2017. Don Staley, the recipient of a $22 million seven year contract extension as of last month. Zaya Cook over to the wing. And for more on South Carolina, we head to Danny Wexelman. Well, you mentioned Dawn Staley, and we shared yesterday about how she shared her net from the 2017 championship season. And this season's motto is net worth. And we've seen that on some of the shirts and shorts that this team has been wearing. But basically what it means is they're trying to tap into the symbol of success in basketball and cutting down the nets. Each member of the team, the program, the fan bases, they all play a role in, in the goal of heading towards March and every role is not the same, but every person has a net worth, Jill. Thank you so much, Danny. It's such a great theme. They have a different theme every year and an awesome theme this year. Prince had hit a three on the other end. South Carolina can't get anything to go. So Oregon has pulled within 11 points, 8.52 left in the third quarter. And Sedona Prince with the spin move and the fadeaway, but she misses that shot. That didn't fall in, but I just, I mean, look at her game. It's so smooth. I love watching her play. One of the big time stars in women's college basketball for what she does on the court and off the court. As Sedona Prince wins that battle against Aaliyah Boston. So Cardoso, she's got to take that shot because they left her alone at the at the free throw line. Everybody's going to double Boston. And if you want to get it to her, you either have to make that shot so people will come out or move the ball around to give her some more space to work. You, you, you do need to go into her, but you can't be so um, narrow-minded, narrow-focused that that's the only thing you're looking at. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Henderson. Well, we talked about Drop, stop. Yep, going up against the big trees. Just beautiful. We go back to that championship net theme and, and Dawn Staley having given all black women coaches as we see the layup there for Pinto, giving them a piece of the championship net. And many of her fellow coaches, both female and male, received those. and foul on the floor just such an interesting and impactful thing uh, that she did and I asked her about the reaction she got from that and Don Staley said hey, you know I'm not about the limelight I didn't do it for all the posting but she said it was it came from my heart it and it, it means something and she was glad it had such an impact on the other coaches well she does a lot for you know for people that are going to come behind her for people that aspire to be where she is and she's very intentional about that she's very genuine about that and um, certainly reminds me of the late great Pat Summit, who was also someone who did things not for herself, but for the good of women, the women's game. And Dawn continues to do that uh, with everything that she does in South Carolina. Of course, uh, Carolyn Peck winning at Purdue gave Dawn Staley a piece of that championship net. As Staley says, hey, she was the visionary of this, and I'm passing it on. Aaliyah Boston's shot doesn't fall. And I mean, that's what you do when you're successful is you bring people along and help them. And, 
you know, no one gets anywhere by themselves. There's always, everybody has some sort of help. Absolutely. And passing that along is key is, you're right, this Boston Prince matchup Yeah, I, I told great. you, this time it was on camera, <laughs> but that, <laughs> that's been going on the entire, um, you know, the entire game, and, and neither one of them want to give up any of the space, and, you know, credit the officials for allowing them to play, but, you know, making the call when they needed to. And when you talk about what Don Staley has done for the game, how about that $22 million contract that she got? What does that say to, you know, we know Gino Oriema with the big contract as well, and but what does that say to the future of, of this game and, and college coaches, as because women's coaches have certainly been paid less than, and especially their assistants? Well, it just says that the, the coaches that, they're worthy and the game is worthy and um, you know Dawn is, is proof that if you spend money you'll make money I mean they sold 10,000 uh, season tickets this year before the season and they're one of the highest uh, ranked uh, universities for attendance so mm -hmm. as you see the steal here by by Saxon women's basketball can be possible it can make revenue but more than anything it's just a great game and people want to see it so that just speaks to another thing that Dawn is doing for the game in the future. She has got something going on over at South Carolina, that's for sure. Pinto in the lane, rolls out, but the rebound for Oregon, absolute awesome put back there by the 6'8", Filipina Che. I know one of the things that Dawn talked about in the press conference was keeping keeping the offensive player in front of them. And I've seen several times now where they've, they've been late on the curl or they've allowed players to drive. As you see the, the foul drawn here by Cook, but it's really forced their defense to rotate in a way that they don't want to and has allowed not just Oregon to get shots, but for them to get second opportunities because South Carolina's players are out of position. So they really need, and I'm sure they'll address this at halftime, really need to focus on keeping their player in front of them. 12-point lead for the Gamecocks. Yeah. So we see Bree Beal back in the game. Zaya Cook from the baseline. Foul down low. And that foul goes to Aaliyah Boston. That's her first. How about that? Her first foul, and he would have expected with the battle she's been having for Prince, she might have picked up another one, but like you said, she's been letting them play. Sheer from the top doesn't fall. South Carolina swinging it around. Destiny Henderson passes it off. I thought she was going to shoot it. She gets it to Victoria Saxton and turn over with the traveling, so... Oregon ball. Good rotation of the baseline by the Oregon back line of that 2-3. Victoria Saxton is known as the glue for the South Carolina team. One of the captains. Don Staley calls her the unsung hero. And Che is not able to convert there off the glass. Henderson over to Boston to Cook. Back to Boston, the give and go. What passing here. Saxton trying to get around her defender. Travel call. And that'll be Oregon ball. And for more on Saxton, we go over to Danny Wexelman. Jill, you mentioned the unsung hero, but Coach Staley also said that Victoria is okay with being the person we don't talk enough about, but we should be talking more about her. She did say she's the glue, one of their captains, and she Three. takes care of home, making sure everyone's ready for practice, and she, again, is the unsung hero of South Carolina. Danny, thank you very much. That's all important. It's not just about what you do on the court, but how you interact with your teammates off the court as well. Pinto made a three on the other end. That cuts the deficit to nine. Boston throws it away with the turnover there. 
And 32-23 South Carolina lead, South Carolina lead here over Oregon with just under five minutes. We'll be back to see Henderson shooting the layup. in the Bahamas for this top 10 matchup between the top ranked South Carolina Gamecocks and the ninth ranked Oregon Ducks and Oregon playing without Niara Saboli and they are keeping this under double digits Helen how are they able to do it well I, you know their 2-3 defense I think is, is rotating really well um, they're not allowing South Carolina to get the ball inside so easily they're making them make decisions and you've seen there have been you know a few travels and Mm -hmm. um, and you got to credit the Oregon defense for that. Prince on the bench taking a little rest. Shear trying to find a teammate, stifling South Carolina defense here. Elise Hurst trying to get around. She gets through the lane off the glass and doesn't go in. Boston with the rebound. Oh, Henderson doing a really good job on Hurst there coming off those screens. Cook at the top. The me here sets the screen. Cook goes around and gets the layup to fall. So strong off the bounce. That's 11 now for Zaya Cook. She's leading all scorers in this game. And foul on Zaya Cook. Not quite there. Rather, that's a foul on Henderson. Elise first at the free throw line. Her first free throws of the game. She hit a couple of key threes yesterday as well to keep them in the game against Oklahoma. She had 12 points against Oklahoma. She averages 12 a game, misses the second free throw. Oregon trails by 10. The Ducks again with just eight players suited up today. We're missing so many players who are injures, injured. Ami here inside. You talk about the injured players. Tahina Pow Pow is somebody uh, who they hope to have back by a Pac-12 tournament, but she is also at point guard, a key player they're missing. Now that's a great example of communication. Henderson made Boston go out there because she wasn't going to switch on her. Great communication defensively. Uh, South Carolina fans love that block by Boston. And if me here wants to take Shea, She's got to oh, use her footwork like that. Two, the two players there, how yeah, about that? Using the counter moves or driving, getting Jay up in the air. Not just going straight at her. That's how she's going to beat her. That was beautiful. Eight point lead now for South Carolina. Pinto threw it up. Looks like some confusion there. Well, everybody wanted to travel on Jay, and Jay wanted to foul. and. Basically, everyone was standing around looking, and this is like there's nothing to call. <laughs> the officiating crew, D. Kantner, Lisa Jones, and Teresa Stuck. If you're an official, you don't turn down a trip to the Bahamas either, do you? No, absolutely not. Foul here. And that foul was on Kylie Watson. First second foul, so now you have three players with two fouls Watson, Parrish, and Sedona Pritz. Certainly hoping. Kelly Graves is hoping that they don't pick up that third foul here before half. That's why Sedona Prince is on the bench, I'm sure. Cardoso with the foul. A lot of whistles as of late. 
2.28 left. Gamecocks with an eight point lead over Oregon. And another turnover. Miscommunication there between Shear and Hurst. Let me here, I'll take the ball out of bounds. And South Carolina decides, Don Staley says, I've seen enough, let's call a timeout. Again, an eight point lead here for South Carolina. The winner of this game gets to take on UConn in the championship game tomorrow. What a matchup that would be if we got number one versus number two tomorrow. Well, I think that's what everybody is expecting. Um, to have South Carolina play UConn. See here defensively, they're, they're stepping it up here and that's what they need to do here, Saxon with the steal. That is an emphasis for Coach Don Staley coming into this tournament. You see Boston rotating after the great communication uh, from Henderson to go and switch on the player. So definitely something that they want to emphasize getting better at as uh, you know the competition gets better as well. But would be a marquee matchup for sure. You know, we, we talked to Gino about that, and he's like, this is what women's basketball needs. They need these marquee matchups early in the season to whet the appetite of fans for, you know, the regular season. And then we've got that great January matchup as well to start off 22 with UConn Huskies traveling to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks. I've got that one in my calendar as well. And you'll see a lot of these top 10 teams, you know, with that tough schedule, they want to get themselves ready as you see me here with the 15-footer there. It, you know, it doesn't really do you any good to play a soft schedule. You're not going to be exposed in what you need to be working on unless you play competitive basketball early in the season. And you'll find most of the coaches in this tournament playing tough non-conference schedules. And you also want to give your kids a taste of what it's going to be like playing different styles when you get to the NCAA tournament. Oregon turns it over. Oh, and that was too easy. And E here with the layup, and South Carolina all of a sudden is up 40 to 24, 16 point lead. Shear drives the lane. South Carolina says, No, thank you. Transition layup for Zaya Cook, 42 24. My coach trying to set up a set play here to calm his team down. Running with. Uh, one four set here. Pinto is ready to check into the game as is Maddie Russell. Shear. Nice job Ma of Shear. Going to the other side of the rim. Shear's kind of kind of gimpy here. And pay attention to that in the second half. And she got clocked in her head in the first uh, first minute of the game here. So I'll keep an eye on her. It's of course the last thing the Oregon Ducks need, right? Because they have so many players who are out and injured. We mentioned Tahina Pow Pow, and then of course you've got Taylor Bigby and Dia Rogers. They're both out as well. And the shot there doesn't fall, but the offensive rebound is cut. Bree Beal's shot didn't go, but they're playing six seconds left for the last shot. Destiny Henderson drives the lane and gets the, re the layup to fall. And that'll do it for the first half here. South Carolina, wow, what a run to end the second quarter as they go up 44-26 at halftime. South Carolina dominating here late. There's a Lamy here at the free throw line getting that jumper to go. There she is again, and of course, Destiny Henderson with the layup. Zaya Cook with the transition layup all alone, and the number one Gamecocks with the big lead, and our own Danny Wexelman is now standing by with Don Staley. I have head coach Don Staley, coach Letitia and me here off the bench, 10 points, four rebounds, but speak about her intangibles in this game right now. I mean, LA, LA's been playing super well for us, I love her aggressiveness. I love the fact that uh, she doesn't back down for anybody. She's just starting to put it all together. She's a junior now. Uh, once she gets her, her, her traveling together, 
I mean, she's a player that, that that's hard to guard because you can play her all over the place, super versatile. More than 20 rebounds in this first half. Was that a point of emphasis coming into this game against Oregon? Point of emphasis. They, they are a dominating rebounding team, so we want to attack that part of it. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I challenged our post players to, to to beat them on the boards, and we, we got another half. But I like I like what we're doing. Coach, thank you. Thank you, Jill. Back. Thank you, Danny. Well, John Staley, of course, uh, impressed with the game, Cox, and of course, what they have done here in the first half, rebounding as well. Yeah, and their defense, uh, you know, making sure that they're making it really hard for Oregon to score, especially their post players, has been huge for this half. Defense wins championships, and Don Staley has talked about how that's such a big part of her team. And that is going to do it for us for the first half. We'll be back with stats and highlights as South Carolina leads Oregon, leads Oregon 44 to 26. Back here in the Bahamas at Imperial Arena where the top ranked South Carolina Gamecocks have a big lead over the Oregon Ducks, 44-26. Zaya Cook, a big reason she leads the way for South Carolina with 13 points, but they have balanced scoring. Pretty much everybody they put in the game has scored. Yeah, balanced scoring, and then obviously with their defense, you know, they were allowing uh, a few more points in the paint than they should have at the beginning of the half, but as you see there, they're the ones putting points in the paint. A lot of those are layups, you know, off of their defense as well, and uh, shooting a little bit better. They shot 10 free throws, and as you see, Oregon's only shot free throws, so uh, two free throws, so big disparity there. And of course, the rebounding, South Carolina out-rebounding Oregon 22 to 10. I mean, that tells a big story right there. It does. They've been aggressive going to the boards on both ends and giving themselves opportunities and limiting uh, Oregon to just those one shots, which again, you see they only have two free throw attempts. And of course, uh, Sedona Prince, who's a uh, six foot seven uh, she was in foul trouble having uh, picked up two fouls so she played just eight minutes in the first half uh, scoring four points uh, she would normally be in there getting a bunch of those rebounds as well and so she, you know she's gonna have to be aggressive offensively and do the best she can defensively because they don't want her to foul out but she still has to play the game and i'm confident you know she will gotta see that aggressiveness uh, from sedona prince and of course, we've seen so many South Carolina players uh, come off that bench and rotate in. They've got so many fresh bodies, uh, so much talent uh, on that team. You might get three uh, starting five uh, off what South Carolina has, what Don Staley has built there. Oregon, of course, with just eight bodies uh, suited up today. So it will be an interesting second half to see if Oregon can chip away uh, at this lead. Uh, you look at Watson. South Carolina, they've been averaging 24 points and 16 rebounds off the bench. And they had 38 points off the bench yesterday. So, again, very important part of their of their system. 38 points off the bench yesterday. Prince takes the first shot of the second half. It does not go. And here comes Destiny Henderson. Um, that'll be a fourth foul on Sedona Third Prince. Uh, oh, they're first saying it's a third, third foul? And that was a third foul on Prince as she leaves the, the game. And Danny Wexelman will join us. Danny? Had a quick conversation with Coach Graves coming back from half. Asked him about his message to his team. He said, we have to fight. We have to play hard. He said, we had two runs that hurt us at the end of the first half. And let's face it, we have three All-Americans not playing in this game, as we talked about earlier, Jill. Niara Sabali not being in. She made 30 points in 31 minutes yesterday, and that was super impactful. So that's going to be key in the second half for Oregon. Thank you, Danny. And she also had 11 rebounds, and they're looking for some effort on that end as well. well tough having Sedona Prince going out with her third foul. The question's going to be how, you know, how long do you sit her this third quarter because you need her scoring, and other people are going to have to step up on both ends of the floor. Great double counter move by Leah Boston. Leah Boston. And You'll see Sedona Prince sitting on the bench. Oregon loses the ball. Sedona Prince sitting on the bench next to Kelly Graves. You know she's probably uh, as big, 
Bree Beal gets the layup there. Kelly Graves calls a timeout, but you know Sedona Prince was lobbying to get back in the game as soon as she can, but that was a, a very difficult picking up that third foul there. Yeah, and all the best players want to stay in the game, so I can understand why she would do that as well. Uh, but you got to be smart if you're a coach. You're going to need her down the down the wire. And so trying to figure out as a staff when the best time is to bring her in. As you need here, the double counter move by Leah Boston. Working those pivots, but I want to know who her post coach is. We'll be back. South Carolina leading Oregon 48-26. South Carolina with the 22-point lead here at the semifinal game for the right to play UConn in tomorrow's championship game. Sedona Prince not on the floor. She's on the bench with three fouls. I see Oregon here trying to get a little bit more movement. They had some success coming off curls, uh, curl cuts in the first half, so trying to get some more of that here in the second half. Is a nice move there. Turn around by Maddie Shear. 20-point deficit now. Oregon trying to chip away at it, and they get the turnover, and then Maddie Shear is fouled. Got to deliver that pass so the post player can catch it a little high there in the six foot eight. Che able to get a hand on it. Victoria Saxton with her second foul of the game. Shear on the wing, backs it up, goes back again. Parrish looking for somebody. Players are cutting, but Shear takes a move to the basket. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Bounce pass inside, and the shot doesn't fall for Kylie Watson. Watson missed that shot, but she works so hard trying to get position mm -hmm. in the post. I really love her work ethic. South Carolina's Zaya Cook drives the lane and draws the foul. So Cook so good at forcing the issue here with her body and her strength, forcing the defender to try to play her, able to get the opportunity to go to the free throw line. Elise Hurst with her first foul. Again, Prince with three fouls as Cook makes the first free throw. And then Parrish and Watson playing with two fouls each. Cook with the second free throw. 50 to 28 is the lead now for South Carolina in this top 10 matchup in Oregon. Just trying to keep it close. It's been tough to do that as South Carolina made that run at the end of the second quarter, which Kelly Graves talked to Danny Luxelman about. And Leah Boston makes that oh, throw. And that's how you score on a six foot eight person. You get them on the move. You don't go straight in at them. You get them on the move off the dribble, and Boston able to do that. It was an 8-2 run as South Carolina closed out the second quarter. Jump ball. Kylie Watson went into the lane. South Carolina will take it out of bounds. Yeah, just good help by Boston there. and Staying on her feet, using her length. So tough to go inside there for the Ducks. Oregon playing more zone, obviously, being shorthanded. Well, it's better to try to, as you see, uh, cook there with a three. You play that zone to try to rest your players, but also to try to get a little bit better rebounding position. You're, you're boxing out an area, and sometimes that helps, but a lot of times it's just to keep people out of foul trouble. Parrish turns it over. Free Beal with the steal. South Carolina's Destiny Henderson is pushing. She drives all the way through the lane, and the shot does not fall. Sedona Prince is checking back into the game. 6.15 left here in the third quarter. Check in for Elise Hurst. And we're going to expect to see Sedona Prince getting the ball fed to her. They're going to need her in the third quarter if they're going to be able to uh, try to chip away at this. It's almost unimaginable that they'd be able to come back on this top te team in the country with the defense that South Carolina has. 
Well, they have success when they move the ball and change sides of the floor, especially with the dribble. They're not going to be able to get it into Sedona Prince off the first or second pass. Maddie Shear taking the ball out of bounds. You make a good point there. It's not going to be that easy to get the ball into Prince. As you can see there as she's being guarded by Camila Cardoso, the transfer from Syracuse. Pinto goes in there and tries to make something happen. Going to get Saxon with the uh, body because Beal had a good block. Saxton is her third foul. So she'll come out of the game. Kelly Graves trying to inspire his players. It's a daunting deficit for sure, but certainly plenty of time left as Pinto makes the first free throw. 5.47 left in the third. 55-29 lead here for South Carolina. It's just a tough for a team like Oregon when you have South Carolina that can just bring player after player after player, and not just player, but skilled player after skilled player off the bench. Right, there's tons of talent as Elise Hurst tries to steal the ball. South Carolina, a little bit of helter-skelter there, but Bree Beal is not. She's got control and makes the layup. Maddie Shear with the rainbow oh, shot. Nice Nothing but floater better. there. That, that one was, uh, that'll bring rain down from the clouds. <laughs> nice pass. An even better oh, hand by me here to catch that. L.A. putting on a show there. South Carolina, their lead is cut to 28. You're right, it's a pretty daunting task here for Oregon, and they're not usually in this kind of situation. They were down double digits to Oklahoma. They, of course, came back, but this is 28 points, which is a different story. Official time here on the floor. Don Staley, uh, you, ta you talked about how much talent there is, and, and Don Staley talked about managing it all, and we asked her... Uh, how, how do you manage all that talent? She said directly. Yeah, I mean, same same uh, same thing as, as Gino. I mean, you have players that come in, and if you're good enough, you will show it, and you will earn your time. But if you're not, um, you will do what you do best, and we'll put you in situations where you're allowed to do that, and you'll wait your time until you get better and you can contribute more. And I think that's always the best way to deal with the player. A lot of the players that come play for her say, that's what I wanted to hear. I don't want someone to tell me I'm just going to come in and play right away. And the numbers speak for themselves. Her players get in there, they grow, they develop, and they go to the pros, and they're always in the hunt for a national championship. So why not? Why not is right, and why not? Let's hear more from Danny Wexelman, who has more on Aaliyah Boston's parents. I had to go up in the stands and find Aaliyah Boston's parents. They're from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, but they came over to the Bahamas their very first trip here to see their daughter Aaliyah play, and I had to ask her mom, Cleon, about when she had to send Aaliyah over here to the United States, just 12 years old, to Massachusetts to her sister because that was the better opportunity for Aaliyah to come here and play basketball. She said that her and her husband, Al, tried to make it to every big game in the United States, every big game internationally. And I asked, what's something that you can tell me about Aaliyah that I might not know about her as a person? And she said, whether or not she has a good or bad game, she said that Aaliyah knows that God has a plan for her. She's deeply rooted in her faith. And I just, I had to go talk to them. I wanted to know why this was so important for her parents to be here. And on top of that, she said Aaliyah will go home to the Virgin Islands. And when she goes home, that means she gives more opportunities to all the girls there to help them grow their dreams too. Jill. Thank you so much, Danny. Just a, a lovely person Aaliyah Boston is and one of the wonderful uh, things is the storytelling that we get of, of all these players. They're so much more than just a basketball player. Leah Boston with nine points, seven rebounds, and three assists so far as she's having a great tournament. 
Yeah, I like the way Destiny Henderson communicates with Sanaya Rivers because you can tell watching her that she's a freshman and she's sort of unsure and she's always, you know, reassuring her like that pass. Not necessarily a great pass, but <laughs> calming her down and giving her some confidence. You know, she's going to be one of the players they're going to need. And so she's getting real-time experience against a top-10 team. When you talk about uh, what, what they're going to need, they are always aiming for Marsh as the aim was just a little off for Lamie here. And all these top 10 teams, that's what they're looking for, aiming for Marsh as Hurst drains the three-pointer and South Carolina's lead now cut to 25. Gino Oriema talked about that. He said, of course, we want to three, win three games and, and win the tournament as Oregon gets the steal, at least Watts, or Watson, rather. I think most of these coaches, obviously, they want to win, but really more than anything, they want to measure themselves you know, against the top competition to see where are our weaknesses, what do we need to work on if we're going to do the things necessary to be there at the end in March. Exactly, and if you win the, the non-conference uh, tournament along the way, even better. Don Staley coaching every second of this game. <laughs> she, was she was a little hot there. to us and I <laughs> Rivers. And it just, I mean, it's, it's funny to me as a former coach because I could just feel her frustration. But at the same time, you've got to give the kid confidence. You know, you leave her in there. And, you know, you make the critique and then you put something positive on it. And you leave her in there and hope she, you know, the only way she can learn is by doing so. Luckily for them, they're up by, you know, 24 and, she has the opportunity to make these mistakes that aren't going to cost her team. Those are called teaching moments. Plenty of them to go in basketball games, especially when you're folding in some young players. And yeah, what they're really called is gray hairs. Um, <laughs> that's what they're really called when you're dealing with freshmen. But um, that kid's going to be a great player. Cardoso already a great player for this team. That's like the third shot they've been working so hard, her and Shay, and the great moves, and they just won't fall. Yeah, that's the second time in a row a shot goes under the backboard for South Carolina. First Cardoso, and now Lemi here. Oregon's getting their opportunities. As you mentioned, they're not following. They're not getting the results out of their last couple offensive possessions, so they will get a foul here. That foul goes against Sanaya Rivers. Perhaps more of those gray hairs you're talking about. South Carolina still with this 24 point lead here with 252 left in the third quarter. A little entertainment for you here in the Bahamas. Fans have been loving this tournament as we talked about a lot of marquee matchups. The winner of this game again plays UConn. The loser of this game will play either Buffalo or Oklahoma. That game is later tonight. Either way you look at it, the three games that you play here are, are great for your team and great for your players because a lot of times you'll tell your players to do certain, if we don't do such and such, you know, this will happen or whatever. And certainly you don't want to lose to learn a lesson all the time, but when it's there in real time, something you've been talking about a long time that they need to do better and they see in this case, you know, where they need to be if they want to be a top team, it's always, it's always good. Pinto drives and scores on the layup and Pinto's got eight points. Sedona Prince with just four points on two of four field goals. She's played just 12 minutes in this game because of foul trouble. Cardoso is not able to get her shot to fall and Oregon getting to work on their offense a lot. Cardoso guarding Sedona Prince. Keep an eye on that. There we go as Watson gets the ball inside to Prince and she makes the shot on the baseline and one. Cardoso likes to block shots with two hands, so I don't know if she broke the plane there or not. Oh wow, that's not 
not yeah. quite sure. <laughs> I wasn't down there, so I'm, I'm not going to say yes or no. But You don't want to get fined is what you're saying, Helen. <laughs> Off the back of the rim on the free throw attempt for Prince, but perhaps that shot or get her going as she's had a difficult start again because she's been sitting on the bench turnover South Carolina and they've been getting careless with the basketball the last few possessions first from the right wing count it three-pointer is good South Carolina up 17 yeah you got to do the small things me here's got to come to the ball and catch it get wide so Dona Prince was able to just get around her because she wasn't making herself big Cardoso out on the wing to Hall Hall's shot goes off the front of the rim and Cardoso, boy, a little loose action there. A lot of hustle on both sides for that ball. Oregon winds up with its spin move pass to Prince, and a foul is called. Foul is on. I believe that was a me here. It was. Pinto at the line. She's got a chance to cut this to 15 points with a pair of free throws. South Carolina had a big lead, 28 points early in the third quarter. Well, sometimes it happens when you're trying to play different combinations and seeing what people have you know, what you're going to try to use for later. Not always have that chemistry there, but needless to say, you're right. They have been kind of careless on these last few possessions down the floor. Oregon with the three-quarter press, and South Carolina wanting to make sure they take care of the basketball here with this 15-point lead. Nice pass inside to Cardoso, who's fouled, and if that goes on Prince, that's going to be her fourth. It was her fourth foul here with 67 seconds left in the third quarter, and that is certainly difficult for the Ducks as Che is going to check into the game. Number 15, Filipina Che returns to Oregon. Sedona Prince has played just 14 minutes uh, in this game because of foul trouble. Now the Ducks will need to try and keep chipping away without her for a bit. If you're coaching her, how long do you keep her on the bench? Well, certainly I, I wouldn't put her back in. You know, there's only a minute and seven seconds left here in the, in the third quarter. Just see how the fourth quarter goes. If you're able to continue to cut down that lead, if you are, you would bring her in earlier. Uh, I mean, later, but if you're not, you, you bring her in earlier. So it's just going to be a a feel for Coach Graves. You, you, he knows his players. Beal running the floor, kicks it back out to Cook, who will set up the offense. Cardoso to provide the screen for Cook. Free throw line jumper doesn't fall. Che knocks it back in. Cardoso gets it back. Now Cardoso has to be stronger with the ball. There are about three or four times where people have taken the ball away from her. She's got to be stronger. I know Destiny Henderson was trying to help her, was trying to explain that to her earlier here in a few possessions ago. Off the side of the backboard for Hurst. Cardoso, of course, at six foot seven. Dawn Staley says, you know, she's probably going to be the future number one pick in the draft. She's like, but I don't want her to be picked just because she's six foot seven. She wants her to have an all around game that she's working on. And a lot of that has to do with, she said, we want her to get to her to know the nutritionist well. We want her to get to know uh, the strength and conditioning coach as well. We need to work on all parts of her game on the floor and just make her a well-rounded player so that she's not picked just because she's 6'7", but because she's got that all-around game. Well, that, that's her goal for her, and that's her, the other goal is to make her the top Brazilian player uh, you know, on the women's, team, women's national team and, and to have her be dominant as a top Brazilian player. So they both have a lot of goals for her. <laughs> she is certainly a talent. Zaya Cook has been really big for South Carolina with her 20th point here, six for nine from the field. And the report, the score, South Carolina, 63, Oregon, South Carolina with the 
19 point lead, 63-44. And they, the Ducks have chipped away at this though. Well, back to a couple careless turnovers you see here, the three by Oregon. And then Sedona Prince making the move and the end one. Gotta be careful, South Carolina. Oregon's still playing hard. We'll be back. And the top ranked team in the country, South Carolina, is rolling here. They've had a few missteps in the third quarter as the Ducks went on a little run there in the third quarter, but they still lead by 19 points. When we talk about that little run, it was actually a big run, 13 to nothing. Yeah, well, you know, when you're in a tournament like this, you, you've got to find out who can play. As I said earlier with, with Don Staley, trying to figure out who does what best and what scenario, and you, the only way the only way that you're going to learn that is to actually put these kids in that situation and be able to watch film. So uh, I'm not surprised. No one wants those careless, you know, offensive uh, um, opportunities there. But you got to find out what your players can do. And South Carolina certainly knows what Zaya Cook can do. She's six of nine from the field, made all six free throws, three assists, leading the way here for all players with 20 points. And Ami here has 12 points as well. Nine points uh, for Beal, and then for the Ducks, you got two players with ten points: Shear and Pinto. Prince, who's on the bench in foul trouble, with six points. That was a great recovery by Leah Boston, getting back in the passing lane there and causing the disruption. They put the ball on the floor and that South Carolina defense shining. Well, they're averaging holding their opponents to 47, 47 percent from the field from the field. And right now, Oregon's at 45, so right about their average. Che loses the ball. South Carolina will set up. Again, Zaya Cook asking for some movement here in this offense. She gets it. She's got Boston all alone from the top, and Boston's three. got the three. Oh, There's where she creates mismatches for people. You got a player like Che on her who's definitely not going to go out there. Uh, certainly taking advantage of that. Pinto in the lane, gets it to Shear. She gets it to Watson, who misses the close range shot calling for the ball is Russell she's got it and then Hurst is, makes a nice play by getting her hands in there to deny that pass South Carolina will reset 10 seconds left on the shot clock Boston comes out to get it Three seconds left on the shot clock. The nice speed to Lamy here, and the shot doesn't fall, but there's a foul. And yeah. that's tough for Oregon. Yeah, working on something that you'll use later on, set play of the zone, set the flare screens on the wing, and then the handoffs on the drive, and execute it to perfection there with Lamy here getting an opportunity on the free throw line. Che with the foul, it's her second. All of that movement that Cause the foul happened within the last 11 seconds, and definitely something that they're going to need later on. Always, what can we do as a team when the clock's running down, or who can we highlight and feature with a screen on the ball or flare screen or something like that with time running down? Let me here. We'll try and hit this second free throw to get South Carolina to 67 points. Eight minutes left here in the fourth quarter. The top-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks seem destined for a matchup with the number two UConn Huskies tomorrow in the championship game of the Battle for Atlantis tournament. Kelly Graves' team, of course, very injured as he has called them the walking mash unit. Shears missed shot and Boston with the rebound. Well, when they get healthy, they're going to be tough to beat because they have a lot of multi-skilled skilled players who can score at all three levels. And Oregon, just such a 
big factor in the Pac-12. Of course, Stanford won Oregon. the championship last year, but Oregon has won the Pac-12 title three of the last four years, so they're pointing toward Pac-12 and hoping to have players certainly like Tahina Pow Pow, that point guard back by the conference play. Boston, pretty move inside. Talk about Kelly Graves and how well he has done in his coaching career. Started in women's coaching by a little bit of a fluke. He was at Bend Community College as a men's assistant coach making $1,250 a year. And the women's coach quit right about a week before classes start, so he was asked if he'd like to coach him. He was told it was a $2,500 stipend to be a head coach, so he said, sure. And that begins the story of his coaching career. He said he loved every minute of being in community college in Washington. He then went on to St. Mary's, Gonzaga, and of course now at Oregon. But Helen, when you talk about coaching at those junior college levels and mid-majors, it's, it's difficult. And look at the salary we're talking about in 1988. Yeah, and he, he started out like most of us the hard way, you know, just for the love of the game and not making much money. He talked to us about how he uh, rented a, a room in the basement of a booster for $100 a month and, um, you know, harvested potatoes for extra income. So obviously he's passionate about the game to, to have to do that. And now obviously he makes a tad bit more money uh, at Oregon. Um, <laughs> and a tad bit more bells and whistles too, yeah, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you that's how it is. You come up, you know, you, you start wherever you start, you put your time in and, if you're passionate about the game and you do your job, you'll, you'll get the opportunities. And uh, obviously he's put his time in and he's been a huge advocate for, for women at, women's athletics as well. That he certainly has. Oh, that's a, a foul by Walter. Foul for, call it. for the loose ball. Let me here makes the layup. And you're right, she doesn't get the, the foul call there. But let me here will take the layup. I, again, I said at the beginning that this kid is my favorite player. South Carolina, um, just because she is, as you see, on there with the shot, she is somebody that, as you said, as you heard from Coach Staley, she can do it all, and as soon as she buttons up a couple things, she's going to be, she hasn't even reached her potential yet, but you, you'll see her guard five positions, um, you'll see her score from everywhere, and very, very important to the South Carolina team, so... Not just my favorite player on South Carolina. I've decided this is my favorite player in all of women's basketball. Wow, that's saying something. You watch a lot of college basketball. You cover a lot as well. So she's certainly one to watch for me as well. I mean, anybody with the nickname L.A., you know she's going to have star power. So love that nickname. And of course, I also love uh, Oregon's, uh, you know, all the players on that team, Sedona Prince and Kelly Graves. And we've talked about the path that Kelly Graves took here to his 600th win, which he got yesterday. And that was fun for us to see so much star power uh, over there as well. And we mentioned the, of course, the deficit you're seeing here today has a lot to do with all of the injured players. Oregon, of course, is undefeated at 3-0. They look on their way to a loss, but we go back to uh, looking at the upcoming schedule for tomorrow. It's a championship day here. UConn, Oregon, Minnesota, Oklahoma, all these great teams here. This, of course, is uh, not the schedule for tomorrow because uh, UConn will likely be playing oh i'm sorry about that my bad the schedule for this evening minnesota syracuse i think i got too much sunshine today maybe a little too much <laughs> vitamin d and oklahoma buffalo will be the late game helen williams danny wexelman and i'll be on that oklahoma buffalo game and zealand shannon will be on the next game coming up but kelly graves of course we talk about potato plowing he did that at 5 a.m 5 a.m. potato plowing. That was what we now call a side hustle. So a lot of side hustles, you don't have to get up at 5 a.m. But talk about the character of, of somebody who just, for the love of the game, doing all these different things. 
That's a great catch. Okay. Adjustment from Aaliyah Boston to get to the other side of the rim there. Kelly Graves still coaching everyone. He's talking to his players on the bench. They trail South Carolina 73-46. Sedona Prince back in the game. And look at that emotion from her pass there to Pinto with the layup. You know the song that uh, Kelly Graves uh, sung for us as he was potato plowing? So as Prince gets the, the nice pass there to Pinto who gets the and one. Kokomo by the Beach Boys. He even sang us a little bar of that. So he's multi-talented is what you're saying. And you are as well, apparently. Helen, you left me on an island, no pun intended. I thought you were going to join in. I don't, want to, I don't want to subject people to my singing. And for more on Kelly Graves, we'll go to Danny Wexelman. That potato farm story is amazing. I don't think we were expecting that, trying to learn how he got into women's college basketball. But a part of that story I wanted to add was not only did he plow potato fields, he did the laundry for Ben Community College. He swept floors. He set up the score clock. He said he had to do everything because he didn't have an assistant coach. But he said that's where his heart was, and he wouldn't trade it for anything. Thank you, Danny. Absolutely. I mean, in addition to getting up at 5 in the morning, he was doing it all for so Ben Community College. As Danny pointed out, he's doing all the things. If you have a team manager, an equipment manager, it was just him. So. He uh, helped turn the losing program around there by doing all the little things. And he said, you know, you appreciate all the things when you get to a Power 5 school, the facilities, the meals, the chefs. Like, you appreciate all that a lot more once you've had a start like that. And there's your favorite player in college basketball, Matisha Lemay here. Just active everywhere. But, you know, give Saxton credit for getting on the floor and getting that basketball to her steal here and able to you know not travel and to get the ball and then just a good decision because the defender was trying to play two people at once I thought she was almost going to go up and try and dunk it she can she can definitely dunk the basketball she was dunking when she was 15 years old so it's, it's probably just a matter of time she may have thought about it as she converts on the and one what a fun Andrew player Andrew to watch is let me here this south carolina team just rolling here in the semifinals. A 76-48 lead, and the crowd is giving me here her due as she gets taken out of the game and gets to watch the rest for the final five minutes. 18 points, 6 for 10 from the field, 6 for 7 from free throw line, and 7 rebounds as well. Talk about having a day. That's a good day at the office. Cook still the leading scorer for South Carolina. 20 points. She is on the bench as well as Dawn Staley is going deep into her bench. Littleton is on the floor in addition to Sanaya Fagan. Sanaya Fagan, the forward out of Georgia. So many players go into this South Carolina team. It certainly rolls as practice players, as rolls off the bench. Anaya Russell brings the ball up the floor. She had four points in six minutes yesterday in the game against Buffalo, in which South Carolina won by 28. And it really tests you know, your mental fortitude when you come into a program like this. You know, to have to try to earn, earn your time. Everybody here is excellent. There is no, you know, you're the, only, you're the best player. and Everybody's excellent. Everybody works hard. And so how do you separate yourself so that you can get uh, playing time, to earn that playing time in the eyes of Don Staley, that, that you're worthy enough to be put out on the floor? And Leah Boston gets a nice round of applause from a great group of fans who traveled to the Bahamas for this tournament to watch the Gamecocks and you know they wanted to see a potential South Carolina UConn matchup and it, that is certainly where we are headed. Well those are two fan bases that travel extremely well and are extremely passionate about their teams. 
you will see them. I, I ran into uh, fans from both teams at the airport, and uh, obviously, you know, they ask what you do, and you talk about what they do on television. And, well, well, who do you think we're gonna? Who's, who's gonna win? We're, we're gonna win. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a broadcaster. I'm, I'm impartial. I'm just here to, to have a good time and see some good basketball. And then they go. They don't only just go into the fact that their team is going to win. They're very knowledgeable. They, they explain to me why their team is going to win. Uh, stats or talent level or uh, they're very knowledgeable. So it's, it's always interesting to run into UConn and, and uh, South Carolina fans. I ran into some on the plane as well. A couple of alum from South Carolina who are excited to come to the tournament as Fagan extends the lead to 78 to 49. As we're talking about UConn and South Carolina, let's continue the conversation, and I'll ask you, can South Carolina beat UConn, or should I ask, can UConn beat South Carolina? Uh, both is po <laughs> are possible. I mean, you know, it, it's going to come down to execution, and the small things that I talked about with Connecticut yesterday and the small things that I talked about with UConn, I mean, with, uh, with South Carolina today, th those are the things that both coaches are going to be going over, not the, the large things that they did well. I mean, obviously those are important, but uh, the tiny things, like jumping to the basketball, not allowing the curl cut, keeping the player in front of you, footwork, I mean, just the little things that are going to make the difference. So I think it's going to be a great game tomorrow. Great game indeed, and what it's just amazing how the stars lined up that both of these coaches said yes to this tournament. Couldn't happen last year because of COVID, but it is happening this year. And the fact that we are headed toward a number one versus number two matchup here in the Bahamas, the two best teams uh, in the country are headed to play uh, one another tomorrow. In November. In November. This looks like a, uh, what does this look like, an elite uh, well, no, I was going to say an Elite Eight. It looks like a Final Four yeah, matchup. It's a precursor to what could happen, obviously, uh, uh, in the postseason tournament. So I think it, it, the interesting thing for both teams is which which bench is going to be the most productive. You obviously have your starting five, who everyone you know, pays attention to, but, but who's going to be the most productive and give them the best opportunity to win from the, from the bench? You look at South Carolina last year, and South Carolina lost to Stanford by one in the semifinals on a, on a heartbreaker. And I still see Aaliyah Boston just bursting into tears, and it breaks my heart every time I see that, that right. replay. But, but rest assured, she will have another opportunity that will come around that will give her uh, the chance to, uh, you know, to put her team back on top. And I can remember seeing the steal she made at half court and Beal's missed shot and her offensive rebound. And it just it just wasn't their year. It was their year in, in 2017. And as Che is uh, down on the floor, it was their year in 2017 when they won it. It was not their, their time last year. It was Stanford's. But we will see what they are going to do this year as they are pointing toward that. And Che is still down. And while she's down, we're going to go over to Danny. Welcome, Danny. We had an opportunity, Jill, to talk to most of the coaches coming into this. And I had to know what's the importance of the inaugural women's battle for Atlantis. And we asked Dawn Staley. She said, I watched the battle for Atlantis on the men's side. It's always been a great tournament to look and learn from. She said, what took us so long to get it? It's a long time coming. It sends a great message to women's basketball community. And she said, we all decided let's make women's basketball in this tournament a great place to be, have all the eyes watching, and set it up for the next tier of teams that will play in the following years. Jill. Well, Danny, I don't know how they're going to continue with what they have in, in this field. Who are they going to get that's going to be better than this? Absolutely right. Thank you for that, Danny. And Helen, how do you continue to, uh, to get the caliber of teams that they got this year? Do you invite them all back again? Well, I'm sure that they would love to come back to the Bahamas, <laughs> uh, but you certainly want to spread the wealth. And mm -hmm. um, they've done a great job with this tournament, so teams know and will want to be a part of this, uh, you know, from, from the time on. And again, the, the responsibility of the coaches who said yes is a really big part. Oh, as you see, nice little move there. Um, as you see, Wesley, um, they, they know exactly. how 
important it was to be here and to make this a good tournament. So I don't think there's a, any top team that's not going to not want to come to the Bahamas and play. I don't think they'll have any problem getting quality competition. Especially after we've what, what we've seen here first, I'm a bit surprised everybody said yes. I mean, from Gino Oriema and Kelly Graves and, and Don Staley and Felicia Legit Jack and, and Jenny Baranchek, and it's just a who's who this year. It's, 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 been, a, it's been great. The top two teams in the country, three of the top 10, four of the top 25. Well, the women's basketball community has always, you know, done what they needed to do to grow the game, and this is just another phase of, of, of doing something to grow the game. The Gamecocks uh, giving uh, props to Anaya Russell, who made several contributions uh, in this game. Three rebounds. And that Che gets the ball inside to Prince that falls off the back of the rim and you can see the frustration for Sedona Prince who claps her hands in, in frustration and it's just been that kind of game for her. But she'll bounce, she'll bounce back, Oregon will bounce back, they'll get healthy. And that's uh, difficult for Prince as well, right? When, when all her playmakers in that backcourt, the, the, the people that are usually getting her the ball are not not getting her the ball. Pow Pow, of course, didn't make the trip, and Kelly Graves hopes to have her back by the Pac-12 season, but it just changes the dynamic of the team, especially when you have so many playmakers in the backcourt that are out. It's just part of coaching. You're constantly making adjustments. Sometimes you have to make bigger adjustments than at other times during the season. Kelly Graves in Oregon not usually in this position down 25 in a game. They're always competitive, but as we have mentioned, it's just uh, been difficult to overcome all the laundry list of injuries. And of course, Niara Sabali had 30 points in 31 minutes yesterday with 11 rebounds. And she has a, a knee issue. She's Resting that knee, she's been in and out with that after injuring that knee in the Idaho game. And she had such a big impact yesterday. And again, all the guards that they're missing. So once they get everybody back, we expect them to continue to do in the Pac-12 what they have done under Kelly Graves. Traveling by Sanaya Rivers. 144 left, South Carolina, the top ranked team, leading 80 57. We're already discussing this South Carolina Connecticut matchup, which women's basketball is so lucky to have here in the non conference as Hurst makes a nice play there. Been kind of quiet today. Yesterday was a big, big factor with some key minutes. Of and Thompson's three-pointer from the baseline goes off the front of the rim. Oregon will push it up the floor. Hurst blocked from behind. And that was Sanaya Fagan. Credit to her with getting down the court in a hurry. She is definitely a rim protector for South Carolina. Just, I guess the force got her with that. They're assuming she got her with the body, but that was a great block. And again, just getting down the floor at, at that at that size. We've seen so many talented bigs with good footwork and speed and athleticism here in this tournament. This first makes her free throw, first free throw and misses the second. And there's the rebound by Sanaya Fagan. So this message should be four on five. <laughs> now the fans were trying to get them to be aggressive going to the basket. Imploring the Gamecocks with one minute left. Rivers, her three-point attempt is no good, and Sydney Parrish will bring the ball up the floor through the lane, and she gets fouled. Fouled to Destiny Littleton. Destiny had four points and three rebounds in yesterday's game. And South Carolina beat Buffalo 
44 seconds left in this one. And yesterday's was a great matchup between two great coaches, Felicia Legette Jack and Don Staley. And we had talked to Felicia Legette, Legette Jack about the piece of the net that Don Staley gave female and male uh, coaches uh, across the country as part of her 2017 national championship with South Carolina. A little sloppy there as Oregon gets the rebound off the free throw and they get the shot off the glass by Che. All six foot eight of her. 30 seconds left in this one. Che's gonna be big for Oregon and she's got some really good upside. Just a freshman, still trying to figure it out, but getting some quality time today. 6'8 freshman, she could still be growing. But she is quite a presence for the Ducks. And as you said, she is gonna keep on learning and keep on getting better. Thompson's three doesn't fall as we have three seconds left here as South Carolina with the 17 point lead and they are about to close this one out. Hurst is just going to walk out the last couple of seconds as the Gamecocks, the number one team in the country. They improved to 5-0 and with an 80-63 to win over Oregon, the number nine ranked team of the country, and Oregon falls to 2-1. and one. Your overall thoughts on, on the Gamecocks' uh, dominance here today? Well, not unexpected, um, but I know Coach Daly saw some things that she wants to shore up, obviously, if they're going to be victorious tomorrow, especially on the, uh, on the defensive end, given her emphasis coming into this tournament. South Carolina gathers at midcourt for the huddle. Post-game victory celebration. They're waving to their fans. They've got a great fan section here that is going to be here along with a great Yukon section as South Carolina and Yukon battle for the championship here in the battle for Atlantis tomorrow. What a matchup that's going to be between number one and number two. And what a great game for Leticia Ami here that she had here today. And speaking of Ami here, Danny Wexelin is standing by with her. Danny. I have Letitia and me here. Letitia, 18.7 rebounds off the bench. Your team is so deep, but what is your mentality when you come off the bench to help your team? Um, I think just giving them a bang off the bench. That's what I've been doing since I've been coming here. Um, I think coach emphasizes that it's going to take a full team effort, a team of 16, a um, to 16, to make sure that we win this game. So I just do what I need to do. When you came out of the game, a huge roar from the crowd. How thankful are you to have fans that travel like this? They pack the stands here in the Bahamas. I love our fans. I mean, they make it easy for us. Um, you know, it's hard to come out here in a foreign country and, and play our best basketball, but they make it easy for us. I think everyone was hoping for the matchup of South Carolina and number two, UConn, number one for you all. The one-two matchup we've been looking for, but what kind of statement will you all be going to make tomorrow in that title game? I think we try to play the same every game, uh, no matter who our opponent is. Um, but obviously, it's exciting time to play UConn, um, get a little rematch from last year. But uh, I'm excited for a big game. It's good for women's basketball, but it's also good to, um, for us to get better for the next, uh, the continuing of the season. And last one for you. This is the inaugural women's battle for Atlantis. Can you just speak to the impact and the importance of finally getting the women here at this event? Yeah, it's great. I mean, we're making great strides in women's basketball. Um, it's really important for the game for us to show out, um, come in a different country, you know, show them um, our culture and show, show them the women's basketball as well. So I'm glad that we're making strides. Leticia, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Jill, back to you. Thank you so much, Danny. Well, you heard Leticia Ami here tell Danny about how she's excited for this matchup with the second ranked team in the country. We've got that one versus two matchup. She said it's going to be good for women's basketball. And again, as I said before, the women's basketball community is always trying to figure out what they can do as a whole to, go to, to grow the game. And she's right. This is a great opportunity to come and, and show out uh, and show the world what great basketball we have here. And your thoughts on South Carolina and what they need to do to beat UConn. Defend, 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 and hit some threes.
<laughs> to boot. Defense wins championships, and Don Staley's team is a great defense, and UConn has that juggernaut offense that scores about 95 points a game. It is going to be quite a battle, and South Carolina dispatched Oregon 80-63 to here in the semifinals. They had their fans. They had that defense rolling, and South Carolina, of course, trying to put all the pieces together to see if it will result in a national championship with a Aaliyah Boston and company. But first, they're going to have to get through UConn in the championship game tomorrow. That'll do it for us here in the Bahamas for this semifinal matchup. South Carolina, of course, advancing to the championship tomorrow. Stay tuned for more action uh, here on Flow Sports uh, in the evening games, but this was quite a top 10 matchup here today.